Hi everybody, welcome back to Making Stuff with Mrs. Barodi. I'm Mrs. Barodi, and today we are gonna be painting a really cute snowman. Look how cute he is. And we're even gonna give him his own little real life yarn pom-pom, all right? So if you are one of my students at Finn, then you will have gotten a kit of supplies. If you are not one, don't worry, I'm gonna tell you all the things that you need in order to do our painting, okay? You are going to definitely need a canvas or a canvas board. Okay, we're using an eight by 10 one, but you can use whatever size that you like. If all you have is watercolor paper or something nice and thick like that, cardboard, you can use that, okay? You are also gonna need paint, and you should have paint in your bag that looks just like this. We have our primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and then we have black and white, all right? You're gonna need a cup for water, we have a little paper plate in our kits for putting our paint on and for mixing. So if you don't have a kit, definitely something that you can mix on. Even if you don't have a plate, you could take a regular plate and then cover it with like saran wrap and that protects the plate and you have something to mix on. You have a pencil in your bag and you also have yarn. Now, if you don't have a real life yarn pom-pom, that's okay. You can just paint one on, all right? Some things that you might not have in your bag that you probably are gonna need, definitely a paper towel. That's gonna help you blot your water off. Um, oh, and I totally forgot. I'm wearing my smock, and if you have one of our kits, you got a handy dandy apron, really smart. If you don't have one of those, an old t-shirt, totally fine. Like dad's or grandpa's old flannelly shirts. I think this is my husband's shirt that I stole and maybe painted a little bit. And then maybe a stencil. Now I'm gonna freehand draw my circle, but if you know you're not very good at the, the drawing of the circles, you can always use a stencil. A roll of tape, a cup, a plate, whatever you got handy, okay? I am super excited to do this. I'm gonna break it down step by step. So we're gonna start with one step and anytime you need to pause the video to do it or wait for things to dry, go for it, okay? Let's have fun. Hi guys, me again. Totally forgot one of your supplies. You need a paintbrush, otherwise you can't paint. In your kit, you're gonna have one that is a rectangle shape, kind of like your hand. If you have other brushes, you can absolutely use those. I might use a round brush if I had that handy, um, but I'm gonna use just what's in your kit to help those of us that don't have other brushes, okay? So don't forget, you need a paintbrush. All right. All right, my friends, we are gonna draw on our snowman. Now we're gonna draw in most of these parts and then we're gonna start our painting. If you make mistakes, make sure that you're using kind of light lines so then we can erase them and our paint will cover things up, okay? So the first thing we do is draw a nice big circle. And again, if you have a stencil at home, a roll of tape, a plate, a cup, something that's about this size, um, the plate that we gave you in your kit is just a little too big for our snowman. So we're not gonna use that as a stencil. So I'm going to hold my pencil kind of in the middle. That helps me give light lines. And I'm gonna do lots of light brush um, pencil strokes until I have the circle that I'm happy with. And we want it to take up, you know, kind of the middle part of our canvas board. And we are gonna draw the whole circle, even though eventually we're not gonna see it because of that hat. All right, so I have to turn my canvas. That just makes me comfy, but you hold your canvas whatever way you want to. And I'm gonna start by making some light lines. I gotta save some space for his carrot for sure. And then when I think I'm happy with the shape, I think that looks pretty good. I have room for a scarf. I have room for the hat. I got room for the carrot. I'm good to go. So then I'm gonna kind of darken up one of my lines a little bit to help me see my snowman shape. Okay, so now I have my snowman head. The next thing we're gonna do is this hat. So the hat kind of comes in two parts. You have sort of this half circle and then we have kind of this bendy rectangle. And we're not worried about squiggly lines right now. That comes much later when we get to the like sort of the last steps of the project, okay? So I have my snowman head and you gotta think about a hat. We kind of pull the hat down on our head a little bit, right? Same thing with Mr. Snowman. So around here-ish, I'm gonna make sort of a curvy line and that's gonna be the bottom of my hat. And then I'm gonna decide how big that brim of my hat is. Is it gonna be giant? No, is it gonna be really skinny? It's up to you. I'm gonna make mine about that big-ish. So I'm gonna make another kind of curvy line. And then, because hats go around our heads, right? We're gonna make this a little curvy as well. We're not gonna make it straight. So we're gonna make kind of a curvy line there and a curvy line there. And now I have the brim of my hat, groovy. So now I have to work on the top part of my hat. So we're gonna make kind of a half circle 
And if it ends up going off the edge of the canvas, we're not worried about it. Because we're gonna have that cool pom-pom and that's gonna help cover up any sort of mistakes that we make. All right, so there I have my hat. Next thing we're gonna work on is his scarf. So almost kind of the same shape for his scarf as his hat, it just kind of curves the other way. So our hat curved this way, this is gonna curve that way. And I'm gonna kind of follow the shape of his head. So I'm gonna pretend my scarf is, let's say it's about, I want a nice fat scarf. So we're gonna make a nice fat scarf. So I'm making my curvy line. It's almost like a really shallow smiley face. And then our curvy lines at the edges. So that's like the part that goes around your neck, keeps you all nice and warm and snuggly. And then we do see a little bit of the snowman. This is gonna be a little bit of the snowman shoulder. So I'm gonna make a line there. And this might get covered up, but I'll make a line there. That's for like the next snowball part of our snowman. So now we have to talk about the knot on the scarf because we fold our scarf or we knot it. And then we have the two ends that kind of hang off. So for this, on this edge, you can make a circle. You could make an oval. Maybe I'll make mine a little squarish because last time I made it kind of a circle. So there's the knot for my scarf. And because we have all this empty space here, let's make one of the ends of the scarf kind of blowing in the wind, right? And we want this part to be about the same size as this because it's all the same thing, right? So there's part of my scarf. And then let's make this the other part of my scarf right there. So now I can erase my line. Okay, so now we have a head. We have most of a hat. We have our scarf. Now we gotta talk about our face. This is tricky, my friends. Some people are gonna have a hard time because it looks like our snowman is kind of looking off that way. So things aren't lined up exactly in the center, but I have a good trick for that, okay? So for our eyeballs, again, if you wanna trace something, if you're worried about circles, go for it. But I'm just gonna draw it in because I've drawn lots of circles. I'm pretty good at it. So I'm gonna make a small-ish circle towards the side of his head near his hat. That's gonna be eyeball number one. We want eyeball number two to be lined up with that eyeball. We don't wanna put it down here. It looks like our snowman is melting. So I'm gonna kinda of use my pencil in my eyeball and go over here a little bit. And I'm gonna make another circle. I'm gonna try and make it about the same size as my first eyeball. But if it's not perfect, that's okay because these are like lumps of coal and coal is actually lumpy and bumpy. So if you make your circle a little lumpy and bumpy, it's all good. All right, we have two eyeballs, and now for the carrot. The carrot is in between his eyeballs, because that's where noses go, a little bit underneath, and we're gonna make a triangle that goes past his head that goes out this way. So I'm gonna start by making this little curved line in between his eyeballs down a little bit, and that'll help me with my carrot. Now, if you want a really fat, round carrot, you could make it rounder. I'm gonna keep mine pretty pointy because I like pointy carrots. So again, nice light lines. And even my snowman, this snowman isn't gonna look exactly like this one, even though I did both of them because today's a different day. Maybe my brain's working better. Maybe I didn't have enough coffee today, who knows? So if yours doesn't look exactly like mine, that's all right. I'm gonna erase that line in there. So now we have, awesome. We got two eyes and a nose. Now this is where things get tricky. Looking at my snowman, I think his mouth, even on this one, not quite right. So we want kind of make a smiley face, smiley face shape, but I'm going to bring it up this way a little bit more. I think that makes a little bit more sense. If you want a really big mouth, you could make your circles go this way, but I'm going to make mine kind of go up a little bit, I think, on the second snowman. So you can see I started drawing a smiley face. That's what you're going to do to start getting your smile in the right place. Okay, so you see that smiley face? And now I'm gonna make the little lumps of coal and they're gonna be smaller than the eyeballs. So I'm gonna make a circle at the end and I'm gonna skip a little bit, make another circle. Skip a little bit, make another circle. And I'm gonna keep don't going until I get to the end of my line. And now I have almost a perfect smiley face for Mr. Snowman. And as always, we do like to name our painting. So we'll have to think of a good name for Mr. Snowman. All right, so we have our circle, we have our hat, we have our scarf, a little bit of a body, eyeballs, nose, and mouth. So at this point, we're gonna erase any pencil lines we don't need, get rid of them, 
okay? Because our paint will cover up some things, but if we left a really dark line around, it's not gonna cover it up. Now, just like before, grown-ups, if you have a little person and it's gonna make your life way easier, you can trace your pencil lines with a Sharpie. That's gonna help you with outlining. It's gonna help you not lose your lines, especially if you're someone like me who likes using a lot of paint, you might wanna think about going over with a Sharpie. I'm gonna do that on mine, just so you guys can see the lines a little better, okay? So I'll meet you back here when I got them outlined and we're ready to paint. Okie dokes, my friends, we are ready to get painting. Now, as always, when we're working on a painting, especially small ones like this, we wanna work from our background to the front and we wanna work big to small. So the first thing we're gonna do is paint the background. So on my snowman picture, I used a light blue. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. But again, it's your snowman. You could paint the color in the background, anything you want. I would avoid black, because I don't think that's gonna look very nice. But other than that, whatever makes your heart happy. So we are gonna mix our paint on our plate because otherwise um, our cups of paint will be contaminated and we need these colors for a few different things on our snowman. So because my background is gonna be so light, I'm gonna start with white. So I'm gonna take some scoops of white. And this is a very small canvas. We don't need tons of paint. And the best thing about a background is it's kind of streaky and not perfect. So it's okay if we need to mix up some more paint. It's all good. All right, so now I have my white paint. Always make sure I put the lid on. We don't want any spillage. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of blue paint. Now before I do that, I wanna kind of wipe off my brush I don't want white paint in my blue. And I'm gonna get a little bit of blue from the edge. I think let's start with, we'll do three scoops and see where that gets us, okay? Now, whenever we mix our paint, tiny stirs, tiny stirs. We want a puddle, not a lake, although I kind of made a lake. Okay, tiny stirs, and ooh, I think this is gonna be perfect. And we don't need to mix it up perfectly because we want those streaks going on in there, okay? Get some of that paint off so it shouldn't go paint all the way up my handle, just on the bristles. And now I'm gonna paint nice up and down brush strokes all the way around my snowman. I'm gonna be very careful not to get it in his head. Any other place, we could probably cover it up, but his head's gonna be basically white. So we need that to be nice and clean and we're gonna do our best not to go inside the lines. So I don't mind going up and down, but if that hurts your brain, you could turn your canvas and paint side to side. Totally cool. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush, I'm gonna start at the bottom, and I'm gonna be very careful when I get close to my marker line. All right, now I'm gonna get some more paint on my brush, up and down, more paint, up and down. I'm not spending too much time in one spot because I want it to be kinda, kinda streaky. I want some light parts, I want some dark parts, and it's okay that I go over that line, no worries. We can find it again. Mrs. Brody is not perfect, just like you guys. Okay, that one little spot is done. And I'm gonna keep painting all the way around. You don't wanna watch me do that. That's a little boring. So I'll meet you back here when I'm all done with my blue. So my friends, I am done painting the background nice and blue. But here's a couple of tips to help you out. If you have a canvas like mine, so this was a canvas board. It's really flat. It doesn't really have an edge. This is a canvas. Whoop. So this has an edge on it. So if you want to make this look nice and awesome, my friend Kai, who owns um, Wine and Design, she's super awesome. When I worked for her, we'd always paint the edge of our canvas. And Mrs. Barodi would always forget and she'd have to remind me. So if you want to give it kind of a nice finished, awesome look, you can go back over it and paint the edge of your canvas. If you have a canvas board or you're using something flat, you don't have to worry about this part. But if you do this, just be careful because this is gonna be wet. You don't wanna put it down on just your table. You wanna make sure that you have a nice workspace that can get a little bit dirty. And moms and dads and grandma and grandpas and aunts and uncles aren't gonna be upset that they have paint on their nice table, okay? I'm sure I've done that a few times to my, my poor mom when I was little. Okay, so definitely paint the edges if you have a canvas. If you don't, no worries. You don't have to do this step. And then you want to be careful around the edges. Like I said, we didn't want to get inside our snowman. So what I would do oftentimes is take my brush and kind of drag out from my snowman, and then I smooth it out. 
Now that I've painted the background and I'm finishing the edges up, I have to wait for everything to dry. If it's not dry when we start doing our snowman, he's gonna get schmeary and then you will be sad and he will be sad because no one wants a schmeary snowman. So once I get done with my edges, I'm gonna put this down, I'm gonna walk away. I'm gonna put my brush in the water. Make sure you rinse your brush. Crispy brushes are sad brushes. Ooh, right up to that edge, look at that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this in my water, give it a little stirry stir, get that paint off, and then I'll meet you guys back here when everything's dry and we're ready for the next step. Okie dokes, my friends, we are ready to paint our snowman's head. And I know what you're thinking, like the canvas is white. The snowman is white. Why do we need to paint it? Well, you're gonna see as your paint dries that it's gonna change whether it's it's a little bit shinier than your canvas. So if you don't paint your snowman, it's gonna stick out in a weird way. It's not gonna look very nice. So when we paint our snowman, again, he's white, but you can see on my example, he does have a little bit of a shadow on his head. So we're gonna be a little fancy pants and give them a little shadow. And it's very easy, way easier than you think it is, okay? So I already still have some of my light blue left over. So to my light blue, I'm gonna add just a little touch of red to make it purple. If you don't have any light blue left, mix up a smidgy bit. You don't need very much. You need just a little touch. And red, red's that bossy color. He's gonna boss blue around. So when I get a little bit of red, just, just a little bit. I'm gonna mix it into my light blue. We don't need very much until I have a nice kind of purpley, lavendery color. So again, I'm gonna get a little bit more red, trying not to get the whole thing bluey. Oh, that's looking into kind of a nice purpley color. All right, that makes me happy. I have a little purple. So I'm gonna take care of my red. And I'm gonna open my white up so I have them ready. Okay, so I have my white. And I got my light purple. I'm gonna rinse my brush because I want it nice and clean. Get a little scrubby scrub. And if your water ends up looking very painty, you can always dump it out and get clean water. It's all good. Okay, I'm gonna put a shadow underneath his hat and along this side of his face. So I'm gonna start there first. And this you kind of have to do quick-ish. So you're gonna put your white paint on and then you're immediately gonna get some of your purple and put it on there. And I'll show you the trick that happens. So I'm getting some white on my brush, kind of brushing down from the hat. It's okay that I'm going over the line a little bit and it's okay if I get in the eyeball because the eyeball is gonna be black and it'll cover up our color totally fine. So now I'm gonna, oh, my brush is getting a little wonky. Kind of smooth that out. We don't want any glops, thin layers, my friends. And you can see, you can still see some of my line there. Okay, so now I'm gonna get a little bit of purple. I like to get it just kind of on the corner of my brush. And then we're gonna go underneath our hat with our purple. And it's up to you if you want it to be a deeper, darker shadow, then you can certainly go over it with some more purple. But I think in my fluorescent school lighting, that looks pretty good. Now I'm wiping off my brush because I want it nice and clean again. So I'm gonna get some white on my brush. I'm gonna go down the left side of his face. And you can see I'm kind of making curvy brush strokes. That helps our shape stay nice and round as we're painting. Again, just a smidgy bit of purple on there. And I'm gonna drag it down along his face. Now you can fiddle with this all you want. You can add more purple. And here's the beauty. If I had too much purple, I smooth it out, give it five minutes to dry, I can go back over it again, okay? I'm gonna rinse my brush because I want it nice and clean now. And now the rest of this face is gonna be white. And you can already see, look at the difference between the canvas and the paint, right? So I'm gonna keep going around and I'm gonna use nice round brush strokes, nice and curvy ones, thin layer. And because I did Sharpie, I'm going right over my mouth my nose, I'm going over everything. So he'll be a nice smooth snowman, but I can still see my lines because they're black for one thing, but also I'm using a thin layer of paint, no glops. And thin layers dry faster. I'd rather do two or three thin layers than one thick gloppy layer. That's not gonna look very nice. All right, my friends. So now we have our snowman's face all painted in. And if you have a little bit of his body, you wanna do that as well. 
We're gonna let this dry and then I'll meet you back here for some scarf and hat action. And on to some clothes. So looking at my snowman, my white is almost dry. So I'm gonna talk about mixing colors and by then it should be dry enough for me to start painting. So I tried to match my hat and scarf a little bit. So I have some purple and sort of yellows and oranges happening up here. So I try to put some purple and yellows down in my scarf so they match a little bit. But if you wanna go rogue and have totally mismatched things, I'm cool with that. So on the scarf, what I did first was painted it all one color. Then when it dried, I came back and did the stripes. So I'm gonna paint this one color. We'll talk about the hat and then we'll come back to the scarf. So I think because I did green last time, I think this time, I think this time I'm gonna try for an orange color. Okay, now if you remember from school, yellow and red, make orange but again red's that bossy pants color so you want to be careful with it and if you add a little white it'll cover better but it'll also end up being kind of like a salmony pink color so it's up to you what kind of color you want going on your scarf i'm going to go with probably just a nice orange color see if we can get a good one i'm going to wipe off some of my extra paint you really should rinse your brush in between colors but i'm going to cheat a little bit and i'm going to grab it from the edge and then I don't have to worry about contamination. This is Brody cheating a little bit. All right, mix our red and orange together. Ooh, it's like ketchup and mustard on a hot dog. All right, mm, I think that's a pretty good color but I think we could go a little bit darker. So I'm actually gonna rinse my brush like a good girl. Get some more red. Mix that in there, see if I like that a little better. This is all up to you. You know, if you're not feeling orange, make it, I wouldn't say blue, then it's gonna match the background. But if you made your background orange, you could have a blue scarf. Ooh, I think that's a good color. Don't do what I just did and get paint on the table. Ugh, this is Brody. Let me wipe that up. That's why I have paper towels handy. And we wear smocks. Okay, so now I don't have tons of paint on my brush. Remember, it's not creeping up my handle holding it like a pencil. We're humans, not monsters. And again, I'm gonna make nice, kind of curvy brush strokes. Oh, look at that orange next to that blue. It's almost like I know that orange and blue complement each other. Hmm. All right, and if it's not dark enough, you can always go back and add another layer. Remember, two thin layers better than one thick, gloppy layer. Oh, nobody likes the glops. Okay, nice curvy, fill that stuff in right there. And again, if you didn't erase your pencil very well, you might see that through your color. So it might be a good idea to add more than one layer. I think my, co my colors are getting covered up pretty good on that pencil. Okay, and you're gonna do the knot, and then you're gonna do the two sides hanging off, and then we're gonna move on to Mr. Hat. So I'll meet you back here for the hat. My friends, if you look, I'm done with the scarf. And here's a tip. Remember when I talked about painting the edge of your canvas, make sure you get the edge of your scarf as well. This is also a good time to double check because you know, Mrs. Brody's terrible at it. She missed a spot. So I'd have to go back and do some blue when my orange is dry. So I've done with my scarf. So now just to make sure I don't smear things, I'm gonna turn my canvas upside down. And now that's away from me. I don't have to worry about smearing it at all. And I can work on the hat. Now I kind of want mine to match again. And I also, the yarn I got is this kind of nice, kind of burgundy purpley color for my pom-pom up here. So I want to think of a color that looks good with this. So this is sort of a reddish purplish color. So I think a color that would complement it, I think about my complementary colors, purple and yellow complement each other. Red and green complement each other. So I think that maybe on my edge here, I'm going to do like a greenish color, okay? And that'll give us some practice on mixing our colors because we don't have green. We got to mix it and make it. So I'm going to rinse my brush so it's nice and clean. Make sure I'm, I'm using a clean spot of my plate. And I'm going to start with white because I want this to be a light color. If you don't want it to be light, then you wouldn't use any white because white makes things tints makes it lighter okay so I have some white in there Urgh, my cup wouldn't close now to make my green I need blue and I need yellow 
And the more blue I add, the sort of more bluey green it's gonna be. The more yellow I add, the more yellowy green it's gonna be. So I'm gonna think do two scoops of blue. And then I'm gonna do one scoop of yellow and definitely rinsing my brush off because I don't want yellow paint. We gave you quite a bit of paint for this. You're not gonna use it all. So definitely don't contaminate it because then you can use it for other things. All right, one scoop of yellow. So I got my blue, my white, my yellow. I'm gonna do tiny stirs, try and get it into a small puddle. And let's see if I get it perfect on the first tie. Let's see. Ooh, kind of like that color. I think, I think it matches our, our background color a little too much. This was our background color. I know this is turquoisey. I think I'm gonna put just a smidgey bit more yellow in there. So rinse in my brush. Getting a little more yellow. There, I think I'm a little happier with that. And because I have little puddles, I'm not wasting very much paint, right? We don't wanna waste our paint ever. All right, so now I got my kind of greeny yellow color. I'm gonna fill in the brim of my snowman's hat. Nice and slow along the edges. You can see I'm turning my brush when I need it to be skinny or fat. I'm just going along the brim. No rush, not a race. Doesn't matter if it takes you four days to paint the snowman, it's all good. Nice thin layer though, because remember we can always come back and add more. And we are actually gonna add some texture to our hat. I'm gonna show you a trick at the end that'll help us out. There we go. So now we have his hat. I think it matches the scarf really nicely. It complements it. So now we have the brim of our hat and we have our scarf. And now I can do this part of the hat. And I think because we have sort of a, a purpley red that maybe I'm just gonna do a nice light yellow hat. So I'm gonna need some yellow again. And if you're using yellow, I would definitely recommend adding white. Yellow is sort of a see-through-y color. It's very transparent and it's gonna be hard to cover up any extra pencil lines or if you made a mistake. But if you add white to it, white makes it a little more opaque. That means that it's not a see-through anymore. And I always dry my brush off after I rinse it, guys. You don't, we're not doing watercolor. Let's see if that's enough white. Ooh, I think that's perfect. All right, not too much paint. It's not creeping up my handle. All right, this one we wanna be a little careful because we did just paint the green, but I have that line in between and I'm awesome. I've done this a lot. So I should be able to avoid my wet paint. If you're a little nervous, just wait for your paint to dry. I'm not good at much, but I am pretty good at a straight line. So I can be brave and go right on that wet paint. It's getting tricky. And again, nice round curvy brush strokes because our hat is curvy because it is on a ball of snow for our snowman. All right, almost done. Okay, now I have my green and yellow hat and my orange scarf. How cute is my snowman? So he's different colors, but he's so far, oh, I kind of swapped the green with the top up there, right? Similar, but different. We don't want cloned snowmen. We want everyone to have kind of their own personality going on. So it looks like my orange is almost dry. So this is where I can add those stripes. If you don't want stripes, you could add polka dots. Nice trick is you could take the end of your brush and get some paint on the end of your brush, and then you can make polka dots like that. So you could make polka dots on your scarf if you wanted to. I'm gonna do stripes because that's what's in the example. Oh no, just broke my brush. There we go. So I wanna make sure my brush is nice and clean and the bristles are a little damp and I am taking my fingers and kind of smooshing them together. So it'll be a nice skinny line. So I'm gonna use my paintbrush like this and make skinny lines. So I'm gonna do my yellow because I had some left over and I'm gonna draw a line but I want it to be a little 
little bit curvy, I think. So I'm gonna draw a line with my brush. Get a little bit more paint. You don't need lots of paint. Make another line. And if you're feeling fancy or experimental, you could also make lines in the other direction and make your scarf look a little more plaid. Plaid is when you have lines kind of going in two different directions. It makes kind of a grid. All right, so I made a line over to the knot. I'm gonna stop for a minute and now I'm gonna do the scarf that's outside the knot. So I'm gonna make these lines go this way, just like the scarf around his neck. But for this one, I'm gonna make my lines go the opposite way because this one is hanging down his body a little bit. Okay. There we go. We got some lines on my scarf. I'm gonna rinse my brush and then I'm gonna add some green lines and then we'll come back and talk about some texture. All right, friends, we are moving on to the next step. So this is where you have some choices, okay? I'm gonna show you how to add texture to our hat. If you don't wanna add texture to your hat, so if you look at my example, there's a couple different colors going on. It looks a little lumpy bumpy, kinda of gives it that knitted or crocheted look like a hat. If you don't wanna do that, you can fast forward to the point where we start painting the face. But I'm gonna show you this first. So if you're gonna go along, let's get started. If not, fast forward a little bit. So we want a color that sort of matches what's underneath it. So in my example, I had sort of a, an orange color and then I put some yellow on top of it. For the purple, I just used more of that purple color. So for my new example, I think for the top, I'm gonna mix up kind of a, a light orangish color so it'll match our scarf a little bit. And I've turned my canvas around cause it just, I like working down here and then I, if it was still wet, I wouldn't be all schmeary and stuff. So we're gonna mix up an orange color and for that we need red and yellow as always. So I'm gonna take a few little scoops, you don't need a lot, not very much at all. And then I'm gonna get some orange or some red to make our orange. And I don't think I'm gonna put any white in this. I want it just to be an orange color like the orange in our scarf. All right, so a little bit of red, and a lot. Remember, red's bossy, we can always add more. All right, I don't hate that color. I think that's pretty close to what I kind of had in my brain. So now this part's important. I'm gonna try and wipe off most of the paint from my brush, okay? So if you have a paper towel, you can wipe it off on the paper towel. I'm just doing it on my plate because I cheated and got a clean plate. So not a lot of paint on there, very, very little. And we're gonna do kind of like a bouncing motion with our brush. You don't wanna jam it in there and ruin it, but you do want to do kind of that bouncing up and down motion. So I'm gonna start here along the edge of the hat where it meets the brim. You can hear that noise. That's how I know I'm bouncing. And this paint isn't super thick, it's kind of a thin paint. So if you want really heavy texture on this, you could always do a couple thin layers and go back and do some more um, bouncing with your brush. Oh no, I went outside the line. I'm not gonna worry about it, because we can fix it later. So we're using thin layers because now I can still see some of that bright yellow from underneath peeking out into this texture. And if you want more of this, that really light, light texture, just barely any paint on your brush, really light bouncing, and you'll get that effect. I tend to use too much paint on my brush, so I'm gonna get a different effect than you. But if you want that really light, where you can really see a lot of the yellow, light, light bouncing. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing this on the top of my hat, and I'll meet you back here when we do it for the brim. And there we have it. I have the top part of his hat all textured up. Still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna be careful. And just in case you guys wanna know exactly what I did on this one, for the underneath, I made sort of this orange color, but added some white, and then I did white and yellow on top of it. For this, I used my blue, a little bit of red to make it purple, and then quite a bit of white to give it that lavendery color, okay? What I'm gonna do on this guy, cause I want him to sort of, you know, match a little bit, I'm gonna make, I think, a darker green color to put on top of here. So this was our yellow and green and white, quite a bit of yellow, not a lot of blue. So this time I'm gonna make it darker and blue is a little bit darker than yellow. So I'm gonna use a little bit more blue than yellow. And again, not very much, a couple little scoopy scoops will do ya. 
Okay, so I got my blue. Give it a little rinse key. It'll dry off on my paper towel. And now I'm gonna get ugh, a little bit of yellow. And we're gonna mix that together. And I'm not gonna use white this time because I want kind of a darker green color. And I think that looks pretty great. Two for two with my color. Way to go, Mrs. Brody. Okay, again, wiping off quite a lot of that paint. We don't want a ton of paint left over. Actually, I had too much, so. Okay, so just a little bit of paint on my brush. Keep this guy out of the way. And you can see I'm always turning my canvas because it's comfy for me to kind of bounce like this and I wanna get along that edge. So I'm turning my, my canvas so I'm comfy. And I'm holding it down so it doesn't make that rocky noise. And then we're gonna bounce on top of this green. And you might be thinking, Mrs. Brody, why don't I just do the bouncing at the beginning? Well, then you'll see the white canvas through it and it's not gonna look as nice or as finished. So we always put a base coat down, then come back. Remember, we work back to front, big to small. So putting that base coat on kind of counts as the background for our hat. And we're just gonna keep bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. And I'm gonna keep filling this in. And then when I meet you back here, it'll be time for the face. And then probably my favorite part is that little pom-pom on top, all right? And there we go. Now Mr. Snowman's hat is done. It kind of matches the scarf a little bit. It looks nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on his carrot nose and then we'll work on his eyes and his mouth. So for the carrot nose, you guessed it, orange. Well, we already got going on. Now, if you want it to be a darker orange, you could add some more red. If you want him to have I'm not sure what other root vegetables are out there. Maybe a rutabaga nose. You could do it whatever color a rutabaga is. If you give them a potato, brown would be good. But I'm gonna keep it orange. And I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more red to my orange so it doesn't look exactly the same as my hat and scarf. Okay, so now it's a little bit darker orange that I can fill in his nose. Ugh, always put the caps on your paint so they don't spill. All right, again, turning my canvas. And this, we just want smooth, smooth painty lines. So I'm gonna be a little careful, try and stay inside those black lines. And this is another one that if you want to and make it a little more solid, you could add a second coat to your snowman, to the nose. And you can see I'm always turning my brush. So right now I'm going side to side so I have a skinnier line. And then when I need a fatter line, I turn it and pull it that way. Try your best not to scribble. It's never gonna look nice with scribbly paint. And right now his nose doesn't look great, right? But we're gonna come back later with our black and we're gonna add a little detail to it and it's gonna look perfect. So speaking of black, let's get started on his eyes and his mouth. And that's just gonna be straight up black. So I'm not even gonna put it on my plate. I'm gonna go straight from the cup. Now, my brush is getting a little sad because I did bounce him a few times. So just be careful that he's not getting too wide. There's a hair stuck to mine, yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the eyeballs. This is what I do when I have to paint a circle. I put a little bit in the middle and then I drag from the middle and I kind of turn my brush, give it a little twist and try and stay inside those lines. So again, I start in the middle, give it a little twist. That's tricky. Took a lot of practice to, to learn that and to do it. So if that hurts your brain or your hand isn't coordinated enough, just be careful, paint slow, try and stay inside your lines. Okay, I'm actually gonna, I think, paint right over that Sharpie, so then I don't have to worry about coming back and outlining. So nice and careful. It's easy for your eyeballs to get out of control and like get bigger and bigger and soon you have a creepy snowman with giant eyeballs. So just really take your time, do your very best to stay inside or on that line. And it's okay, again, if your Circles are not perfect because technically this is like coal and coal isn't always a perfect circle, right? Now these little guys, this is where things get tricky because look how big the brush is compared to those little circles. So for this, I'm gonna get just the corner of my brush 
in there. So I have paint just on the corner. And I'm gonna hold my brush in a different way and I'm gonna use just the corner. I had too much paint. Just the corner to really do a good job and stay on that line. And this is a time that if you had extra paint brushes at home and you had something a little smaller, go for it. Some of us just have what came in the kit and that's okay. That's what I'm using. If it's good enough for Mrs. B, it's good enough for you. You can tell I'm not talking anymore because I'm really concentrating. Okay, so I'm gonna keep painting the coal on the mouth and then we'll come back and work on the details on his nose and the rest of his face. Okay, dokes, look at his face. It looks fantastical. So you might notice that his carrot looks even better now and that's because I outlined it with my brush. So when I did that, I'll show you on the side of his face. Got just a little bit of paint on my brush, not very much. And I'm holding it so I'm just using sort of this edge of it and very light touch. I'm just gonna go over the line that I can see through the paint. Okay, just like that. Again, very slow and careful, gentle. I'm just kind of using that very edge of the brush and coming through. Try not to get paint on my arm. Okay, very slow and careful. Ooh, don't want to smear my carrot. And use so little paint. So I didn't get more paint on my brush just to do his head. See how much better this looks than his hat now? So you want to go around with your black and outline everything really carefully. I'm not going to do that because I want to move on to the next step. But you want to do that. If that makes you nervous and you want to use a Sharpie, you can. But it's going to be a little shinier than your paint. And we gave you all this lovely black paint. So you could do that. Again, it's up to you. You do you guys. All right, so the last couple of things, we're gonna add some details to his carrot nose and his eyes, and then we'll work on that pom-pom. So I cleaned my brush off just because I felt like he had too much paint on it. And again, I'm gonna get just a smidgy bit of paint. Just a smidgy bit. And we're gonna make little lines on the carrot to make it look more carroty. I'm gonna turn my canvas and it's just a little tiny line. That's it, and they don't even have to be even. Kind of up like that. Here we go. Looks better already. And now we're going to add a little white to his eyeballs. So I showed you this trick earlier where you can use the handle of your brush to add a little dot. And right now his eyes look kind of lifeless. They're, they don't look shiny. So we want to add a little shine to it. Oh, look at all that white crusty paint. Whoa. Okay. So I'm going to take the back end of my brush and I'm going to give him a little dot. Boop. And a little dot. Boop. And you could stop there, but we're not gonna. We're gonna add a little white swoosh as well. So a little bit of white paint, not very much. Get the little swoosh. Make sure that your paint is dry, mine is not. Bad Mrs. Brody. Look, now you could also add a little, little something to your coal mouth as well. And there we go, look how cute he is. Adorbs, almost finished. Now we're gonna work on that pom-pom, okay? And we gave you enough yarn that I think if you mess up, you can make a second one, but I gotta see. Let's see how much yarn I have before I promise anything. So for this, you're gonna need a pair of scissors to cut the yarn, and you're gonna need something to wrap it around, and you're gonna need something about the size of a deck of cards. I happen to have several decks of cards because I like playing Crazy Eights with Mr. Barodi. But if you don't have a deck of cards, um, a smaller cell phone, uh, something rectangular-ish would work, okay? And I'll meet you back here once I gather up my supplies. Okay, friends, so I have my deck of cards in the box, that's helpful. I have my scissors, I have my yarn, and I actually rolled mine into a little ball to help me out. And because I have a cat, and my cat really likes yarn, I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So I kind of put my paint around it to corral it. So as I pull the yarn, Hopefully it stays in its little corral and doesn't go bouncing onto the floor where she can get to it. So I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna start kind of near the end-ish of my deck of cards. So I'm gonna put a little bit there. And I'm gonna hold it with my finger and then I'm gonna start wrapping around. And as I wrap a few times, I should be going over that string and then hopefully it will stay there and then I can kind of let go and keep wrapping. So you're just gonna wrap 
and wrap and wrap and wrap. It kind of depends on how full and fluffy you want your pom-pom. I'm gonna say I'm gonna use most of this yarn. So if you're not sure, watch me before you do it. And if there's another way that you make pom-poms, go for it. There's a way that your grandma taught you or your aunt or maybe your uncle, somebody, then you can do it that way. I think that that looks pretty good. I have a little bit of yarn left, not too much. So I'm gonna snip it off there. Of course, you're gonna hold your scissors better than I just did. What was that? Now this is the part where things get tricky. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute and I'm gonna cut a piece of string for tying and I'm gonna have that ready for when I take this off of here. You might mess up the first time, don't be frustrated. Unravel it, do it again. So I'm gonna be very careful and I'm sliding it off of my deck of cards. Okay, then I'm gonna make my string go around the middle and this is the part you might need some grown up help with, this is tricky. And I'm gonna tie a knot really tight, oh, tie it again. And then because I just really wanna make sure that it stays, I'm gonna wrap it around again and give it another double knot. This way there is no way this is coming apart. Okay, and then, this is kind of a fun part. I put my scissors in the loop. See how it's kind of going through the loop and then I snip. Ta-da! So again, through the loop. It's okay if you miss a piece, you can always go back and get it. Okay, so now I have this weird sort of shape, right? This is all, all this whole thing is fun. I keep saying things are my the most fun part, but this is kind of the funnest. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Now I'm gonna take my, my sort of scraggly thing. Doesn't quite look like my pom-pom yet, right? So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna rub it in between my hands. Just kind of roll it around, rough it up a little bit. Okay, looking a little bit more pom-pom-y. So you're gonna do this a few times and then you're gonna trim and don't be like my sister when she started trimming Barbie doll hair when we were little and you keep trimming and trimming and then suddenly Barbie has a buzz cut. So once you've sort of fluffed it a little bit, you're gonna see some parts are bigger, longer than others. You might have an, a loop that you missed. Okay, now we're gonna come through and trim. And we want this to be kind of a ball-ish shape. We want these not to be super long because kind of the shorter they are, the fluffier they will be. I'm using my terrible kitchen scissors right now. That was a bad idea, Mrs. Brody. Okay, so it's going a little shorter. See how that side's shorter than this side? Trim a little, you can always trim more. You can't put it back on once it's trimmed, right? No way we can glue all that stuff back on. Oop, I still see a loop. Keep trimming, just keep trimming, just keep trimming, trimming, trimming. Okay, trim and trimmed. All right, now we're gonna do the fun part again. Rub, 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 rub. Get all your frustrations out. All right, that's looking much better. I can see a few longer parts. Not like my hair wizard, she's really good. I bet she'd be really good at this part. So I'm gonna trim some of those much longer parts off. And also trimming sort of opens up those ends so they can get sort of fuzzy and frizzy. All right, let's move all that out of the way. Rubby rub rub, rub some more. All right, and now we have a pretty good little pom-pom. Okay, and you can see the more you wrap, the more of these ends you would get. So if I used up all that yarn, it would be even poofier. So for this guy, I hot glued him on. I don't know if you can see or not. So I just put a blob of hot glue and then smushed it on. If you have a canvas board like mine, or a canvas like mine, not a board, this is cloth. So if you are very careful, you could poke a hole in here and then you could put some string around your pom-pom and string the string through the canvas through the back and tie it off. You could use Elmer's glue. You're just gonna have to wait, you know, a few hours for it to really dry. Uh, super glue, mm, I don't know if I'd recommend that. Um, tape, probably not gonna work. So options, hot glue, that would be my vote. Elmer's glue, and then if you have a canvas, you can maybe poke a hole carefully and stick it on there, all right? So there's my second snowman. Look how cute he is. And there's my first snowman. So. Even though I painted them, are they exactly the same? Nope, I think his head turned out a little bit rounder. 
I sort of like his carrot color a little bit better. That pom-pom is on point. So I hope you guys had fun. Please show me pictures. If you're one of my students, throw it up in our Google Classroom or have your parents email it to me. If you're not one of my students, show it to somebody. I know there's gonna be somebody out there that's really proud of your work. If you have any questions, again, if you're one of my students, throw it up in the stream. Otherwise, have fun, guys. Make sure you're being safe, you're being kind, and you're definitely being creative. Oh, and warm. It's so cold out there. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.